Split screen. Hey, people, here we are with another week of Reaper Toolbox Live. I am Ann Forrester, Reaper Miniatures resident paint creator and sometime moonlighting as a staff painter, here to entertain you, hopefully, for the next hour and a half with painting Mr. Seahorse. Mr. Seahorse. I actually put some paint on Mr. Seahorse while I was prepping, actually, this week. Uh, since we're supposed to get him done by the end, by the Kickstarter party, I'm hoping to have him done. So I was actually doing some pre-painting -pre and uh, trying out some things, actually, to see if they worked or if I didn't like them. And, yeah, I'll take you guys through some of that, I think so. Do-do-do. Uh, hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dan. Hi, Taz Lynch. Hi, Orion. Hi. Hi, Edra J. Hi. 40,000 hammers. Hi, everybody. Yay. Hi, Rainbow Sculptor. Who is, who is Rainbow Sculptor? Is it one of our sculptors or is it a different sculptor? No, Rainbow Sculptor is Christine Van Patten. If yeah, not. she's one of ours. Christine, hi. Totally yay. I love your little kids, your, your adventuring kids in the Kickstarter. They're brilliant. More. <laughs> yay. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to see y'all. Yay. Blues and Silverthorn. Hey, hero, hero. Collins made my uh, my chat box huge today. So, oh hi, Willis Watcher. Thank you for joining my Patreon. That's awesome. I'm actually I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm about to start posting on there. Hey, 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 hey. Oh yay, bits. Thank you. Thank you for the bits. Yes, Not thank bad. you. Yay for the cheer. All right. I think I told you guys I was going to do yellow today. I was experimenting to see if I liked yellow on Mr. Seahorse. So, all right, you want to switch to minicam, Justin? There we go. All right, I'll take my hand out of the way. So we're going to be working on this side, but you can see that I started blocking in yellow. I'll show you guys the other side as I was experimenting. I'm not sure if I like it yet. So this is something that I've been known to do is try out something on one side of the mini to see before I try it out on the other side of the mini to see if I like it. Um, and we're getting hosted. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, hey, Rhonda. Wow, all sorts of celebrity, celebrity chat people. So yeah, so here I am experimenting. I was doing this uh, over the last couple days down in my room. I wanted to go yellow with the fins because, uh, yeah, flippers. Hey, you twisted on it. Well, you can see I'm about to show you what I'm going to do with the flippers. Thank you, Taz Lynch. Um, oh, are we getting... Tier, tier 3 sub. Yay! Super Taz Lynch. Taz Lynch wants me to stream more, obviously. Um, so yeah, so on the other side of Seahorse, on the sea, on the part we were, uh, the first part we were working on yesterday, I kind of blocked in some yellow, uh, and I used this to kind of figure out what I really wanted for Seahorse, because when I started, I actually had used something much closer to go straight up golden yellow, or lantern yellow, um, and it was way too bright, and the reason it was way too bright by itself, because you can see how much darker this is than that, um, is because Seahorse here himself, like, started with the bright color, right? The thalo, thalo blue, the clear thalo blue that we gave away last week. Um, and then I added white to it. So it makes sense then that when I go to add a, um, another contrasting color that I would have to also add white. So what I ended up doing is about, uh, mix, I want to say about uh, maybe three drops lantern yellow and four drops of white, around that. A little heavier on the white, actually. Yeah, yeah, Dance of Death uh, non-zero value is kind of on hiatus because they wanted me to paint something for the Kickstarter during the Kickstarter. So little seahorse here is coming up. I can't tell you when. I can say Reaper soon. Actually, I can say soon and not even Reaper soon. Um, yeah, Rainbow Sculptor Lantern Yellow is also in my top 10. I use it all the time. It is, uh, I think, our best orangey yellow. Uh, yeah, 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 non-zero. Don't worry, Dance of Death will be coming back um, right when we're done with Kickstarter, after the Kickstarter party. It was actually kind of a, a, a cool thing for me to be able to break from it since we've been doing it for, what, 14 weeks, Justin? Oh, jeez. I don't even yes, remember. Yes, technically, yeah. Te yeah, about 14 yeah, weeks. 14 episodes. So, yeah. you know, it's nice to take a break, and then when I go back to it, I can uh, tackle it really fresh. Um, so, yeah, totally. Oh, I should tell you guys what the free is. So, in keeping with our digging stuff up from the past archive, we have, for free this week, um, for our giveaway, we've got our Ghoulie Bag Promo Mini from last year. So, the smoky, translucent wraith that Julie sculpted. 
um, along with a bottle of Spectral White, which is a specialty color that we have put out for past Halloweens that we haven't put out for a while. Uh, it's kind of a purple white. It's really good for doing spooky effects and glowing effects um, if you want kind of a, a hot purpley glow on stuff, so evil magic, that kind of thing. Also is just a really good base for white. If you want an unconventional white, you can use this as the shadow. So that's what we got. We got a number of sets of them. I don't know exactly how many, but Justin does, and he'll keep you posted. Yes, I will. All right. I have pre-mixed all my paint. So, little horsey, do you have fish still? Do I have what? The fish that I sent you last time. The picture. Oh, yes. Do you want me to put that up on the... Yeah, I want to kind of show now, people what I was playing with. Hey, Jacob Danson. Now, our screen real estate is kind of at a premium right now. Where do you want me to uh, put it? Just pop fish up. Kind of, can you put him on this side of, like, the screen toward the butt of the horse? Yeah, I can do that. Little little insert there. So, guys, I'm going to flash fish up on the screen. I'm going to flash you with a fish. Oh, no. Um, to show you kind of what I was doing here. Yeah, Spectral White is awesome. Uh, do 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 Hey, Bayou Tiger. What is Justin's favorite Kickstarter me so far? Let's actually get into those. There we go. Okay, so you see fish up there in the um, top left corner. Justin is inching fish down. So that's what I was kind of trying to do up here on his cheek. Um, is kind of put that, that kind of maze pattern that you see in fish on fish's back. Um, I'm still working with it. I'm not sure if I like it or not. I kind of do. But I haven't decided. You can see here that I kind of tried to map it in. I do this on models, guys. I just like take a small part of it and just kind of experiment to see if I like something. Especially with freehand, you don't always know if you're really if your idea is going to translate. So just blocking it in, and then if I don't like it, I can always paint it over with my base coat. It's just a quick block in. So for right now, the jury's out on whether I really like this texture pattern and whether I want to repeat it over some of the rest of the mini. Um, so on the other side, we're going to be, uh, see, and, and now we're on this side where I have not yet painted in my yellow. You can take fish off, but you can see fish is yellow fins, actually, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do yellow fins just like fish. All right, so a lot of this blue is what, what we're coming down to, actually, is a lot of this blue may disappear, guys. I used it as a good base coat because it was nice and solid, um, but I may actually highlight it up, as you can see on Hippocampus's front here. If you see his face and how light it's going, I may actually bring it up that light. So Hippocampus is actually kind of a blue-white, blue with blue in the shadows and kind of the gold uh, and yellow patterns. And then I did take his muzzle pink because it seemed to need to want to be pink. Uh, is there going to be a current paint set added to the Kickstarter? Yes, Rat Mastery. I did actually pick one of those out. Uh, and it's uh, a combo of bones and core colors. And it is uh, uh, essentially kind of a mix of colors that I like, but that people might not reach for very often, maybe because they're later in series or they just don't get a lot of attention. So it's it's that kind of, it's an Anne's Choice uh, paint, paint uh, set this time. So once they put that up, you'll be able to see. So, okay, so the yellow I'm working with, as I explained, I had to add some white to it uh, to make it go well with this blue. So I'm starting with Lantern Yellow, and it's got a little more than 50-50, a little bit more white than yellow added to it. It might be three to five. Um, so I'm going to start, I'm going to grab a bigger brush. Remember, you always want to use a brush that is as big as you can get away with while still staying in the lines. So I'll use my number two brush, which still has a pretty good point, to paint in the yellow. I've laid down white first because yellows often don't cover very well. This yellow is an exception because it has white added to it, but it's still better if I don't have that kind of blue shadow underneath of it that I have to fight. So I'm just going to put down the white first and then I'm going to put the yellow over the top. Um, and then somebody asked for your favorite model in the Kickstarter so far, Justin. Yes, actually, I just answered in uh, chat. There. Oh, what did you say? I, I said the Valfurix. The Valfurix. Yes, because it's the, uh, I believe that's the, the Chunky Dragon. You like way. Chunky Dragons. Justin likes Chunky uh, Dragons, I, and he cannot lie, you guys. I, absolutely. I, I feel almost a kindred spirit with the uh, size of that dragon. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, no body shaming in chat. Um, even, if you're, even if you're self body shaming. <laughs> Chunky Dragon appreciates your uh, your solidarity, though. Yeah, it's it's just it's also just looks really solid. He just looks, he, he is uh, like a slug of stuff, isn't he, he? He looks like he's built like a like a linebacker. I just I don't know. I like is that it. he is the one that I painted right? He's Swampy Dragon. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, that's what I thought. I need to actually. I w I wanted to get Swampy down Swampy down and do more uh, work on him, but. I well, needed to get work done on horse. Although so. now that I think about it, I might be biased because you painted it because it looks so Ooh. damn good. Oh, paint job. Paint job bias. I mean, paint jobs? It's a thing. 
Paint jobs sell minis. They really do. Yes, that's what, that's what I keep saying. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. Reaper, you are cleverly evil. Oh, yes. Actually, uh, you're crazy, Pa. That's uh, Actually, I love the Greek Odyssey. Uh, the whole thing is really good. I was surprised because uh, I knew I liked one of the models in it, but I hadn't seen them all. And I love the, um, the statues, the columns. Those are amazing. Yeah, Bayou Basilisk. And actually, a close second for me is the Basilisk, the new Basilisk. Um, and that one's obviously unpainted. But every time I see it, it's just it just looks really... Not that our old Basilisks... Basilisks. Not that they didn't look good. It's just this one really... I don't know. It's nice. It's a new sculpt. It looks really good. Yeah, you can see that the the yellow covers really nicely over the white. So it's not, not much extra work to put down some white first when you're putting down uh, reds, yellows, and oranges. Uh, oh, bye, Rap Master. You glad you got to stop in? All right. Ah, I, bl I splooged. Quickly grab some water when you splooge and just take off the paint. Ta-da. Just don't sweat it. Don't panic. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just grab some water and unsplooge. Uh, can we get some leaks about what's happening tomorrow? Ooh, I haven't heard anything, but nobody tells me anything, Jerry. Oh, by the way, Anne, you should watch tomorrow. It's really important. Oh, uh, nobody told me, though. Are you telling me now? Uh, I'm not telling you, but um, I'll tell you after the stream. Oh, okay. I don't wanna, All right. All right. I, I know. It's going to drive everyone I'm to gonna chat be, crazy. Yes, but... I'm, I'm going to be home, but yeah, I can watch. Do, do, do. I, in fact, I'll need things to, do, to uh, distract me. So, Let's see here. Some big news. Reaper Collins, there he is, taunting you guys again. No, no PS, please. Uh, question, Dan, good, Dan, good child. And of the 28 wells in your palette, approximately how many do you use in the session? It really varies, Dan. Um, I mean, I start out with a fairly conservative selection of colors. Right now I've got... Uh, five, as you can see. I've got the yellow-white mix, the lantern yellow uh, plus pure white mix. I've got pure white straight up. I've got rich indigo, um, the one that uh, we're uh, releasing in a Kickstarter triad now. I've got my orchid purple uh, prototype also uh, in the upcoming New Colors Kickstarter. Uh, and then this one is the clear thalo blue plus white that I used for a base coat. Now, as I move on, I may mix with horse here. I probably won't go very much farther um, just because uh, he's so limited palette. I mean, he doesn't look like he is, but these are really his colors. I mean, these and mixes of these. Uh, the muzzle here is rich indigo for a shadow, orchid purple, and then with a bit of white mixed in um, to, to, you know, make those colors. Here it's uh, the orchid purple with um, some of the yellow mixed in uh, for the gills. And so, so for simple models like this, mm, I might get a couple more colors mixed up if I really want um, a, a mix ready to hand. Uh, I might add another dark, like I might add the black indigo when I get to his hooves, for example. Um, so I'd say on average, probably about, right, for this model, probably six or seven. For any other model, I'd say almost half. Um, keeping in mind, Dan, that I, I usually paint for fairly short bursts, um, although sometimes several times in one day. So I will often clean out my palette between like one and a half hour sessions. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'd say the most I've ever done is if I'm painting on the same model that has multiple areas and colors uh, with highlights and shadows over the course of like two days. Like if I saran wrap my palette and keep it good over the course of two days, then I might fill in as much as three rows of this. So maybe have like six or seven wells left. I don't think I've ever used all of it. And the reason is I get really irritated when I fill in all of my wells. Like I like having a lot of white space. It may come from being a 2D artist where you just like white paper. Um, I feel like when I fill up all of my wells that I'm just, I'm just getting too messy. Uh, I really thrive on having an ordered area when I'm painting. Uh, it degenerates quickly while I'm painting, so I will often clean up between sessions. Um, I haven't entirely decided if I want, I hope that answers your question, Dan. Uh, I haven't entirely decided if I really want the ear all yellow. I kind of was thinking that maybe I didn't, so I think I'm going to experiment on this side of the ear and try it with a blue-yellow combo instead. 
Yeah, Dan, I don't either. I, I really do. Um, I really do. I think I think when I was painting on Soldier, like especially if I'm doing finishing work with a model that has several different colors, when I was doing that Overwatch statue, I had reds and yellows and blues and then the shadow and highlight and I had some metallic. And toward the end of a big project like that, I'll stop and I'll do touch-ups. That's when I'm most likely to get all those colors open on my palette at once. Um, and that's when I'm more likely to just bust through and get a whole bunch of different colors uh, all open at once. So most of the time, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't necessarily use all this. However, they do make smaller versions of this palette. I have seen a mini one that I think has, I want to say, 12 wells. Um, that's nice and, and tiny, uh, but it's still the small of a well. Uh, it's still the, small, the size of a well. So let me see if I can get Horsey's ears to look good. Um, but so you might look for the little one because uh, I, I know that a lot of people use it because they really love it as a travel size because it takes up very little room, but they can still get 12 colors in it. Just trying to get in there, get his little ear mocked in, and then I'm going to do some yellow on the underside of the ear and see if I like that a little better than doing the whole ear yellow. I guess they're ear horns, but you know, whatever. It's a seahorse. We'll see if we like that a little bit better. Let's see here. Ah, Sparrow Marie has one of the little ones. Good, good. Uh, water to paint to water ratio, paintbrush, dropper, Everlina. I use both. Um, I have a dropper bottle of water that I keep. I don't, don't ask me why I actually need the mixing bead in it. I guess I really don't. Um, but uh, I also will just use brushfuls. Uh, and when I use, it won't necessarily be a brushful, but I'll pick up water on the end of my brush. And then I'll just drip, you know, I'll do the little brush shake to drop a drop in. And that's about the same drop size you're going to get from this. I seldom will grab a huge brush full of water when I'm working with this giant brush. I'll seldom grab a brush that's this full and put it in because this is at least two, two and a half drops of water in this brush. Um, so it means you don't control it as well. But if I just shake it out, I'm going to get one drop for sure. Uh, so... It depends on how fast I'm moving, if I have time to reach for this or if I just really want to throw some water in it. At times, I might just, if I'm using a slightly smaller brush, I might uh, chance this and drop a brush full in there. But the only, I, I'm more likely to do that at the beginning of my mixing process, like when I've just added paint to it, um, than when I'm trying to tune it. Because obviously when you're trying to tune it, you're trying to add a very small amount of water at a time until you get it to the right consistency for, say, layering. Uh, so, do do do. Treat it like a Game of Thrones episode. Collins, are we gonna start killing people? Are we gonna start killing models? We need to do that. We need to start killing models. Uh, I'm looking. I have a dropper bottle for water as well. Nomad. Good. So good. Good. Nomad Z. Good. There's a question about the comparison between Citadel paints and. Oh, uh, okay. I see it. It's at the tail end of that one. For KB Snow Owl, KSB Snow Owl. Snow Owl. Sorry. Uh, free paints are the differences in Reaper paints with base and layer. No, there are not actually. Um, well, okay, kind of, but not really. Uh, when we did the HD line um, Snow Owl, we were actually looking at Games Workshop's foundation paints. We wanted to make a slightly better coverage line, and the Bones line was based on the HD line, the old HD line that's now canceled. So yes, the Bones line should have slightly better coverage out of the bottle, so it is a really good coverage line. But when you come down to it, both lines can be used for pretty much everything. The reason we have a separate Bones line is because Ed wanted a small, self-contained, Bones-branded paint line specifically, uh, since that core line is so very large. That said, core does tend to be slightly better for thinned applications because I did make it that way, and bones tends to be slightly better for base coats, but you can make both lines do it, pretty much all that you want. All right, we're going to put some yellow on the underside of this horn, and I'm going to decide if I like the look of a two-toned horn or not. I'm trying to keep this in the camera and still have you guys see it. Notice I'm still using my gigantic brush because my gigantic brush still has a really good tip, so I can get away with it. This is a number two, for those of you who are, who are wondering. And it's actually a number two fat. Fat brush. That's what we're just going to start calling full-bodied brushes. Question, Forever Night. Shoot, I'm watching the screen. Oh, increase your pleasure, the Kid Heroes gets it. Yes, Taz Lynch. No, I like Kid Heroes. Wait, is this like saying, no, I like Arya, don't kill her, please. 
Um, go ahead, Forever Night. I'm watching. I'm watching. Be careful on the side of the road there, Dan. Good child. I appreciate the dedication to the show, but uh, yeah, yeah. Please stay safe. <laughs> Yeah, Greek Nikos. Uh, yeah, I will occasionally drop uh, some water in there. Yeah, yellow. Okay, so we're going to talk about yellow today, Elwindel. Wind- El so good for you to be here. Was there any of the green in the one, any of the green in the one dollar paint bin last weekend? Like the new green, the, the shiny, awesome green. This green, my my favoriteest new color green that we're putting out in the Kickstarter. Leaf leaf bud green. Uh, no, none of that should have been out there, because although I have it, we have not yet pumped it. In fact, um, we, make a, we make an effort when we're doing special or new edition or new things. Uh, okay. Oh, and now we have a question about sample paints. Actually, I was about to say that. Uh, so, okay. So, sample paints are usually colors that are one-offs because we were mixing something and somebody made a mistake. Um, So the purple that you got in the sample bottle is actually unique and it's not in the line and it was the reason the reason it got put out as a sample is because uh, we made a mistake when mixing and we couldn't make it into anything that was uh, that actually existed. Sometimes I can switch them. Uh, The reason is that I'm I'm training my two uh, assistants Sadie and Sarah to mix paint and so because they're getting a lot of training we're getting a lot of mistakes because they're new, you know, they're new to it. So, so yeah, so totally. Unlabeled bottle with a black lid. Probably a bones color then, Forever Night. A lot of the times, if it's unlabeled bottle and it's in samples, it actually just fell on the floor while we were bottling it, and we can't just stop and spend a lot of time figuring out what they are, so Ed decided to just throw them in the samples. So if you compare that to a bones, uh, to bones colors, you may be able to find out what, what care, uh, color it is. All right. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, Sig Wolf. I know some of them are really pretty. Often, um, if, it's, if it's like an easy mistake, like sometimes it's like, oh, we made a metallic, but we put the wrong flake in it. Or it's, uh, oh, I added black instead of blue here or something like that. If it's really simple, uh, or maybe you made something in the wrong base. Then we actually have the formula, right? Because we're like, we know there was only one thing that went wrong. But more often than that, it's a color that they've tried to make, and then they've added extra pigments to to try to correct. And by the time you get down to the end of it, you just don't know. You know, you don't even remember what all went into it. So sadly, the samples are uh, not really repeatable. Now, if you, uh, if you swatched it, like if you, if you brought it to Paint Club or you swatched it, I could probably tell you the closest thing um, or even tell you how to mix it. How do I come up with the colors? Do you work with any? No, I actually don't use a computer in Eurocog. I do, uh, I just use my paint brain. Um, I went to art school and color has always been kind of my superpower. It's always, it's the thing, it's the first thing I key in on. Uh, with miniatures or when I'm just outside looking at pretty stuff. Um, some people key in on other things. My boyfriend also always keys in on the lighting uh, and ambient light, but I always focus on color. And so what I do usually these days, uh, what I did in the old days was I would start with just a basic, figure out a basic assembly of colors. Uh, ooh, ooh. We get, we're, we're going back up past a whole bunch of questions, Justin. There's a Reaper Miniatures question about um, the new paint, um, paint set in the Kickstarter. Yes, it says, so the last triad of colors in the current Kickstarter paint add-on are new, new colors, question mark. The, there is only one add-on paint set in the Kickstarter right now, and they are new colors, or they are reprints of um, HD or ReaperCon past colors, which are no longer available that we wanted to put back in print, like the Rich Indigo. Okay, and then back. Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, for example, um, paint paint line development process. Uh, we're going to be designing a few new colors to add to fill out um, a bones paint caddy. And so we need to essentially add a few new colors. What we will do to that, since we're looking to fill out bones, is we will get all of the colors together that are currently in bones, and then we will lay them all out together in groups of colors. So like, I'm gonna put all the reds together, all of the, all of the yellows, all the greens, all the everything, right? Um, and, okay, uh, Shirokami, hold on that question for a second. And then I'm gonna look at all those bones colors and I'm gonna say, okay, what are we missing? 
So I can tell you right now, looking at the reds, even when I think about it in my head, you know, I'm throwing succubus kiss in there and I'm throwing, you know, any of, uh, any of that stuff, I'm gonna say, oh, well, we, we only have one pink, right? We don't really have, we have a nice dark red, we have a nice reddish brown, we, we have a good, heraldic red is a nice middle grade red, but we really don't have like a dark pink, you know, we've got monster moss, so we could put another pink in there. So that's an example of how I go about adding colors to an existing line is I look at what do people need to paint stuff, you know? Like a darker pink for doing the inside monster mouths plus monster mall would be great and for obviously painting things that are pink, you know, stuff like that. Um, so take me back now to Shotokami's question. Uh, Shotokami's question. Uh, what is the difference between acrylic thinner and flow improver? All right, you know, they're probably very similar, Shotokami. Acrylic thinner is just some generic term that a company throws on something when they don't want to label it as any particular thing. But an acrylic thinner is probably a particular kind of flow improver. There are two kinds of flow improver on the market, and there are also some mixtures of the two. And essentially, it's different purposes. Some flow improvers are meant to thin and extend the paint while holding it in solution. And that's what I would say acrylic thinner probably is. While other flow improvers are formulated to break surface tension and make the paint uh, full, uh, yeah, self level better and flow off your brush better. Uh, and that is the kind of paint uh, flow improver you usually find in miniatures uh, applications. But both are useful in miniatures applications because the one that uh, holds your paint in suspension while thinned obviously is also good when you're thinning your paint for layering and glazing and things like that. You don't want your paint to fall out of solution. So that's what I think it is, is acrylic thinner is just a specific type of flow improver. Also, uh, Nayira asked what yellow that was that you're using. Um, this is lantern yellow plus white. It's uh, slightly more white than, uh, here's lantern yellow, 9407. Um, it's slightly more white than yellow. It's, uh, I think, three drops yellow, five white. Sean Ald, yeah, I was just, I was just saying, medium is this, uh, when you get to medium now, that's just kind of different. Like, a thinner is obvious. They're trying to thin the paint with it, right? But mediums can be used for different applications, like matte medium. And they usually are trying to create a special effect. Like gloss medium is trying to hold your paint still in suspension and not water it down, but, um, but also add some gloss to it, for example. Matte medium does the opposite. It mats out something. Um, and so they're not actually the same. Medium is actually something that would have resins in it, whereas thinner and flow aid are different chemical applications. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, no problem. And, and Sean Ald, that's a great follow-up question for this, yeah. But mediums in general are, are paint bases uh, that have been doctored to create a specific effect. Uh, let me see, I want my rich indigo. I want to kind of line between this yellow. I, I actually like this yellow and blue split on this horn. I'm going to keep it. Um, oh, I guess I, since you guys want yellow painting tips, I'll actually stop with the horn. I'll show you what I'm doing on these fins. All right, so first, all my lining on this model, since I want it to stay really bright, um, and playful. I want to not use, I'm not actually going to use a straight up liner color. I'm just going to use a darker um, blue violet, the color that I used on the eyes here, uh, which is rich indigo. And you can see how dark rich indigo looks when you put it against bright pastel colors like I have on this horse. So I've thinned it a bit. I would say probably it's at about two to one because I still want a pretty solid line. It's not a liner color, so I can't get away with um, less than that. And this may still be a bit thick. So I'm going to line it, and I don't care if I have to touch it up. So I'm going to line it around. Also, while you're doing that, Miss Ann, uh, Jacob, yeah. Jacob Jansen had a question. Sure, what? Um, he said he, he wanted to know if you could name a color based on a number or name a number based on a color. Like color number seven? Yellow I, number seven, I for example? I assume that's what he means. Um, technically, I could, but nobody would know what it meant. <laughs> Unless it's a pun. I guess we would know then. Uh, I can name a color. My only rule in naming colors is that, oh, it looks like actually there's a spine there. Um, my only rule in naming colors is that I don't name them after food, and I have violated that inadvertently in the past, um, but I, try, I tried moving forward to never do it because we try to uh, not confuse little kids. I don't want to name something. I had a, a color called Dusky Grape once, and I'm kind of glad that it got canceled because we don't want little kids drinking it. I mean, our, our paint is non-toxic and it won't kill you, but we really don't want you to drink a whole bottle of it. It's not good for you. It's not food grade. Non-toxic and food grade, not the same thing. Looks like this has a little spine here that I missed. So I'm going to actually put that in real quick. 
just block it in. I can refine it later. And I think it's because that he's, he's steering with these big fins, so he wants an extra support spine there. Uh, bruise purple, the same as bruise purple, 9602. Yeah, Bruce Purple, it, it's mostly Comrade Cory, you know. No, Promenade Pink is still available just to buy, so I wouldn't do it that way. Um, Bruce Purple is not available to buy, and that's why we brought it back. Because we brought it back for a ReaperCon color, and everybody remembered how awesome it was. And I got uh, requests from the artists for it, so essentially that's why I decided. I've always loved Bruce Purple. It really has a place um, I think in a line, it's not just a specialty color. It's fantastic for skin shading, especially undead skin shading. Um, so no, we're not going to bring back, uh, well, like I said, prom night you can order. Um, it's just, a was a special promo paint that we did, but, uh, but yeah, some, sometimes we do bring back out of print paints. Well, like we said, uh, we brought back, um, black indigo from ReaperCon also is coming back uh, with the Kickstarter triads. Essentially, Kickstarter is my only way to put paints back in the line right now um, that may have gone the way of the dodo. So uh, I took the advantage of this in order to bring back some paints that I get a lot of requests for. Uh, so the indigos are an example of that. And then I got to make a new indigo to make a highlight for it. So that was double awesome. I really love blue purples and purple blues. So for me, win. Uh, let's see here. Tide Pod Green incoming. Haha. <laughs> uh, some of the holiday paints are food themed Nomad Zeke, and I had to, those were just as, like a holiday. It was hard not to. Ginger Cookie, I definitely, I hope that little kids understand that it's really not a cookie. Um, yeah, but I try to avoid food names. Like, like there was a, there was an orange, like, um, Lotus Orange almost got to be salmon, and then it, no, I, I put the, put the no on that because food themed. So, when I'm being very conscientious about it, which is most of the time, I avoid food names. Believe me, otherwise, uh, 9137 would have been dark chocolate because everybody knows that uh, black and brown really is, like, absolutely the color of dark chocolate. So if you want to paint dark chocolate, like a chocolate Easter bunny, I would use black and brown. Yes, Niero, the, uh, the Bones 5 live coverage is after this, but actual P Reaper Live is tomorrow. Oh, Drown and Pull Pink. No, I already put out all of, the, um, all of the new colors that are going in the KS and Sell It On Oceans. So Brad, Drown and Pull Pink is currently still rare. We got to keep come some colors rare. You guys wouldn't get nearly as excited about it if you could get it all the time. There must be some special things. Otherwise, how am I supposed to like have tons of fun at ReaperCon by, you know, teasing people about drownables and making them say it out loud and, you know, making their kids say it out loud? I mean, I, this is the most fun I have at ReaperCon, let's face it. Ah, Snowball, sorry. Thanks, Screek, for catching that question. Uh, Dragon Blue. Wait. Oh, Dragon Blue, it will be. Uh, it will come out, but I don't have a, a timeline for individual sale. But since it is in one of the Learn to Paint kits, uh, Learn to Paint Kit 1, it will absolutely um, be coming. Just, uh, yeah, keep your hat on. Uh, we are really working on it. I think it's, no, it's not. It will be coming out in the Paint Caddy, if nothing else. And once it's out in Paint Caddy, I like to, I think we'll have it available individually. I do not remember which set it might be in a paint caddy. Maybe four? I can't remember. But it will be. So, so don't worry. You can continue holding a candle for it. It will not stand you up. It won't ghost you. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm once again using my awesome uh, Orchid Purple, which is a very reddish purple, which is one of our Kickstarter colors. It's my super sexy purple, for those of you from my Patreon. Um, it is a very red purple, as you can see. It's gorgeous, and you can absolutely use it to shade yellow with, which is kind of nuts. Uh, U.S. Infantry Blue. Uh, describe that, Greek. I don't, I don't even know what color that is. There's so many. Is it a dark blue? Is it a gray blue? Um, I, there's so many historical colors that I don't know off the top of my head. Like, I know, is it close to, like, French blue from... Napoleonics. I'm trying to think. So yeah, so Mr. Finn is now lined with our super sexy purple, or I mean orchid purple. 
I would be a navy blue. And there's nothing close to like a um, worn navy. 9229 isn't close. Can you tell me how to shift it? Worn navy is our most neutral navy. Um, and uh, the other one would be Brion blue, which is uh, 9055 is also a good navy blue, but it's more, it's a more intense. Oh, slightly darker or more desaturated blue than on hippocampus. So maybe soft blue or heather blue. Actually, heather blue. Try uh, 9231. See if that's close. 9231 should be like this kind of brightness or darkness, maybe a bit darker, more grayed out, more desaturated. Um, that's heather blue. All right, so what I did is remember I undercoated yellow with white. I mixed my lantern yellow with white to apply it. Now I'm going to take some straight up lantern yellow and make it darker down near the root of the, uh, the fin. So I am using another well. We'll see how many wells I get up to. I'm just going to use a couple of drops and I am going to just use a brush full of water because uh, I just need it to be thinned so that I can kind of tint it so I don't care how thin it is really. So here we go. Get my, I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. Well, maybe not. Makes more sense to stay with my big brush right now. So this is full strength lantern yellow. You can see how much uh, more intense it is than its uh, pale pasty friend over here. It's thinned down. Um, you can kind of see, let's see where, yeah, you can see where I painted it. It's very thin over the palette. You can see it's pretty see-through. I want that because I'm trying to just make kind of a blend, a cheaty blend. And I'm gonna just paint it toward the bottom of the fin. What this is gonna do is it's gonna brighten up the fin a bit and make it slide a bit more toward the, uh, the brilliant yellow, but it's not going to be so disruptive as it was of just painting the whole fin with golden yellow, or lantern yellow rather. And I'll do a couple of uh, layers if I want to, just to make it more intense. And I can paint it right over my orchid purple and it's just gonna work just fine with that. Orchid purple and yellows play amazingly well together. Like you really can use orchid purple to, to shade yellows. Here, I'm gonna actually show you guys. Let's see, there's a horn. So if I put orchid, if I put uh, that on there, I can pick up just a tiny bit of this. And the reason these work so well together is that there's so much red in the orchid purple. And so since it doesn't have a lot of blue in it, you can actually use it pretty fearlessly with yellows. You'll you will desaturate slightly, but not as much as you'd think. But it will actually make an orange that is workable. There we go. So see, it will actually make kind of a soft, soft orange. And then if I go and highlight with my paler yellow up here, it works. See? So yeah, you can shade yellow with purple. Who knew? Yeah, Shotokami, it is black magic. It absolutely is. So yes, there you go. You can shade yellow with purple. It works just fine. Uh, it also lets you uh, sneak in colors. Um, like if you're trying to add some purple, but you don't actually want to add purple areas in a model, you can sneak it in as a shadow. All right. So yeah, so there's, that's why this works. That's why putting the purple in the, uh, in between the fins, uh, and then putting some of that brighter yellow right over it just works just fine. Uh, and then I want to lighten the out or outside edge of the spine. So I probably want to take some pure white and go over, although I need to touch up one of my fins here. I can see that I that I went a little bit thin on this, this one right here. There we go. I want to make sure that my lines are all nice and solid. There we go. Great. Okay. Oh, and I can show this. Actually, I can show that shading trick down here too because I've got a big, and this is, um, you guys can, here, I want to make sure. There we go. I like it when you guys can see my palette because then you can uh, see how I spot mix. So I'll do kind of like you would on a wet palette. I will do a spot mix on my upper surface here. If I need this color, if I don't want to affect the overall purple because I'm still going to use it for lining these fins, but I want a thinner variant so I can use it for shading, I'll just spot mix it on my upper level here. 
and then I will use it to like shade this area. Because I want it really subtle. It's a lot of magenta in this color and it's a staining pigment, which means it will tend to stain what's underneath it. So I don't want to go too heavy with it. There. There we go. That's not bad. So yeah, I just wanted to take down that the flatness of this surface because there's a big uh, area of fin here that's kind of stretched tight that doesn't have a lot of variation in it. All right, let's grab some white. Load up Mr. Brush. I'm using a real thin brush now. I've switched to a small brush. I'm going to load it up, then I'm going to unload it. Unload it and unload the heck out of it. You don't want much. I've still got a little yellow in there. That's not too bad though because we're doing fins. And I'm going to dab. Normally I'd come at this from the opposite direction, but I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it. So I'm going to just put a little bit of this white on the outer edges of each little thin bit. Thin bit is a technical term. Am I missing any questions? Specific palette, uh, cheap Bob's art supplies, uh, and search for porcelain palette. Your your uh, neurocog. Up. Oh, what was Rhonda answering? Is is Rhonda answering my questions now? I wanted to make sure. Uh, she was just chiming in that you uh, online swatches are generally not a good. Oh guy yeah, they, it's so hard, guys, because all of your computers are going to see them differently. So what we used to do is just tune them to print specifically, to print out okay, but then everybody's printer is different. So we kind of gave up. We're kind of like, all right, this is ballpark, guys. Um, we try to get as close as we can. Thank you for the bits. Oh, do we get a bit cheer? Bit cheer, yay! We like bit cheers. Cheer for our bits. Or since you're the computer side, is it, are we cheering for Justin's bits? Sorry, I had to make a, had to make one off-color comment. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a Reapercast, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not Ed. I mean, there's nobody that can make me that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, there you go, Nomad Zeke. Thank you for that link. HD Bright Turquoise will make it in a... Sparrow Marie, that's one of the colors I really like. Um, I need to kind of look at... I may make a variant on it, because there are some things about it that kind of uh, were, were very difficult to uh, mix. So uh, you may get a turquoise that's close, but I hope a little bit improved. Um, it was very troublesome to mix. Actually, to chime in on this, because this is semi-serious, um, uh, thank you, Nomad Zeke, for the, uh, for the way that you've put the, uh, the, the actual link in there. That's actually really helpful. But a forewarning, uh, hopefully no one abuses that. We have a fantastic community. Um, do not do what he did to promote links in the chat, please, that aren't otherwise uh, authorized by us. We've linked that one before, so it's completely okay. Yeah. But if someone uses that particular method to bypass things that they shouldn't, that'll result in an instant ban. Just as a forewarning, guys. Yeah. Because we got to uh, keep it, you know, clean. How do we know which type Ish. of three paints are in the ghoulie bag? Um, ghoulie, ba ghoulie bag colors are, and uh, Christmas colors are always core. Uh, because usually I've, I've got a rotation of holiday colors that I've created over the years, and I've created them all as core colors. Um, they should have white caps to echo that. Uh, KB Snow Owl. Uh, no problems, Nomad. I, I trust you. A lot you. of the, yeah, You've Nomad, you're, Nomad you're good. We've, we've linked yeah. the palette it's, before. Our normal people that come in are, are great core of people, and as it grows, it, are great. That's not what I'm, it's the random people that come in that want to do harm you, to the channel. Yeah. Those people I don't want to help. Yeah, don't worry. You're good. All right. So there we go. So there's my fin. See? All right. So the white, you can see, adds some pop to the edge of the fin. Um, and then there's still that, that bright yellow, the pure lantern yellow down in the roots. And in between is that transition yellow, the white plus lantern yellow that I mixed earlier. So that plus the purple. The nice thing about putting the purple, um, yeah, graveyard bone and fresh blood. Yes. Um, I really like those those spooky colors we put out for Kickstarter 1, and so I tend to use those when it comes to ghoulie bag colors because a lot of people forget they exist. Um, 
Bones Paint and HD. HD was formulated uh, to have slightly higher coverage. Bones Paint was directly patterned after that Polath. So they are very, very similar in consistency. They are just different in colors. Uh, the Bones Paint line is a nice, is a bit brighter because I knew a bit more about formulating paint and getting that to do what I wanted. I had, uh, I, I knew the technology a lot better when I went around creating the Bones Paint line. So I consider it the evolution of HD myself. Um, who originally came up with the idea for you guys to do Twitch shows? Jerry, Justin and I both campaigned for it. I follow a lot of Twitch streamers who do uh, Overwatch. And I was like, I, I was seeing other painters start to do Twitch. So, and Justin uh, also, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the original. So we were doing YouTube originally. And then uh, I, I actually uh, made a huge push in the beginning because actually, believe it or not, uh, getting Ed and, and Ron on board with Twitch streaming was kind of difficult. But... We convinced them after doing it a couple of times, and you guys, of course, came out to support us, which then snowballed, and then they're like, wait a minute, this is awesome. Yeah. So, Spe- and then, yes, and then yeah, we kind of switched doing to, live, right? we, yeah, that switched to, well, Twitch live, yeah, but. So, uh, how many people do we have in chat right now? Just curious. Uh, we have 200. Nice. Thanks for coming out today, guys. I'd love to see us break that 200 mark. Whenever it gets high like that, it makes me happy. All right, I'm putting in a little bit stronger purple, um, a little bit. So, so the cool thing here, guys, if I want to intensify my purple a little bit down here at the bottom, because I might have lost it with my little glazing. Um, the other great thing that, that this does, using purple to shade, uh, shade the yellow, means that both colors appear brighter, because that's the optical thing that happens when you have complementary colors next to each other. Both colors will look more intense. So by adding purple to the shadows, I'm actually making the yellow look even brighter. And it's a way that our human eye just kind of functions with regard to those colors. Woohoo! Good, Shotokami. I'm glad you've learned. I wanted to send a thank you out also to my patrons who are on here. I know that I have several of my patrons from my Patreon who do sign in to, like, you know, chat and uh, look at us. So thank you. Uh, my Patreon, for those who care, is um, patreon.com slash painting big uh, because I started out doing mostly big models on there, but there is also a, there is also quite a bit of tutorial stuff for little, i.e. 28 millimeter, and I'm going to try to be doing a little bit more of that in the future as well. So patreon.com slash painting big. That's Anne. That's me. Uh, and I do talk a lot about paint chemistry. I just did a PDF um, and a short video about using the Reaper additives, for example. So it is kind of, I am kind of a walking advertisement for Master Series Paint on there. Just be prepared. <laughs> oh, let's see. So, oh, yay, my painting big, yes, painting big sticker. Yay, I'm glad you got one. Yeah, yeah, and there are stickers. If you, if you run into me at shows and you're a patron, you totally get a painting big sticker. Oh, and I have one to show you. So, yeah, so this is my logo. Wait, I can, I can override the stream. Ta-da, it's a dragon. That's my sticker. It's my logo. So, all right. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash Painting Big if you want to look me up. Uh, I keep meaning to put up free content on there, and I just haven't gotten to it. <laughs> but I'm working on it, darn it. Uh, so, there. So, there's our fin. It is our finished fin. See, I've brought in the purple a little bit more strongly here down by the margin, and it's really making the whole thing look a little more three-dimensional. Um, we definitely have a technical effect going on, but this is a saltwater seahorse, and those are so... Um, if, even if you're not a patron, if you guys come up to me at ReaperCon or something, I usually have extra stickers. So, uh, do, 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 do. let me see here. Maybe I'll do a membership drive on Patreon and, uh, and offer the stickers as, uh, as if you sign up. And if so, you can, uh, I'll promote that on my Facebook, which is Ann Forster. Um, and a lot of you may have friended me already. Usually if, if somebody's in the miniatures industry and they, or a miniatures painter, uh, and they're friends with a bunch of my friends, I will absolutely friend you. Yay, because we're all one big happy community. There we go, a little bit more purple. So the more purple I put in, the more drama, you know, the more dramatic three-dimensional effect I get. And this is a lesson just about shading in general, because, you know, you always, people, uh, sometimes you get timid to go too dark with your shadows. And actually, even me as a student in art school, I had a problem with that. I was always very timid about my shading. Uh, I did a lot of pencils. And uh, I was always like, oh, I can't go too dark with that. I can't go too dark with that. But the darker you go, the better details stand out. And so this fin is a good example of that. Um, 
bright colors in nature. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm basing a lot of saltwater fish, you know, the angelfish and parrotfish are bright blue and yellow. Uh, tang, t the blue tang is the best known example. So that's kind of why I chose to go with these colors. And then I made the gills of the more of the reddish purple color. And now that I'm starting to add that down here, these make more sense visually. So as I add that, that more of that purple in the shading, and then that picks up that same color up here. And these actually, the little striations are highlighted with that same yellow. So I'm, I'm repeating, I like to repeat colors around the model. It helps the eye travel around the model um, and see all the details. So it helps your viewer when you repeat. When you repeat colors around the model, it helps the people looking at your models because they can see everything. Oh, uh, let's see here. Discontinued paints getting the no one will find the body red caps. That's cute. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wilderness Green. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, the Bones 4 paints actually, Elwindo. I'm really glad you like them. I like them a lot. Nomad Zeke. Uh, I had bottles of Clear Viridian and Clear Plum. Uh, Clear Plum is not reincarnated yet. Uh, Clear Viridian, we're getting really close to it. When um, Ed wants to put out a set of Clear Brights, we just put out uh, like a Clear Thalo Green at ReaperCon just as a promo, but Ed wants to put out all of these Clear Brights that I've done over the years, and that would include the, the Thalo Green, and that is very close to Clear Viridian. In fact, I think it's a better version of Clear Viridian. So the Clear Plum you can actually mix yourself if you add some Clear Magenta into our Clear Purple. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, brush you won the other week. Oh, we gave away out fives, right, Justin? Yes, it was the okay. one at your suggestion. It was okay, the... yes. So uh, just to give you an idea, Trasharama, I think you're pretty much equivalent to a double zero in the Windsor and Newton Series 7, and you're probably equivalent to a zero in the Da Vinci Maestro, maybe one size down but it's close. Um, so usually uh, the Reaper designator is a little bit smaller than the same brush in another line, I think. Um, although a double aught would probably be close to an aught three if they were using the scale. Uh, uh, Rainbow Sculptor. Christine, I don't know. Um, I'd need to find a good translucent figure to paint and then uh, mess with it. And I do need to go back and finish Dance of Death. So maybe, eventually, but not sure when, probably is my best uh, response on that. I'm gonna add a little water to my clear indigo, uh, rich indigo rather. At this point, we are about two hours into cast since I mixed it, so, or I'm uh, sorry, an hour into cast. So about after an hour, just to give you guys an idea, these paints on my palette, I mixed this an hour ago. It, uh, I only added two drops of water to it, so it was two drops of water and about eight drops of paint. And after an hour in this palette, I only now needed to add one drop of water to keep it good. So, oh, the whole rose triad. The rose triad. Dan, I loved the rose triad. Ha, Kefrixis. No, Silverthorn, no. Don't make me paint a translucent copper dragon, please. Um, I was thinking water weird or something. I always kind of liked that whole thing. I like the water weird. I think he looks really good painted with his fountain in, uh, in opaque and then him in uh, translucence. Ah, uh, best way to store your brushes. I usually store mine lying down, um, but if you have a static holder at your desk that you can put them standing up, the most important thing is to keep their little tubes on. That way if they fall or something lands on them or if they get mushed up against something else, uh, you are protected. Keep the tubule, the power of the tubule, never underestimate it. Oh, I just dump my water cup and then store them in there, uh, brush side yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Brush side down. Brush side down, yeah. Because you're terrible. I mean, I will, I'm going to be honest with you. Whether those brushes are splayed out and all over the place with no point doesn't improve or, you know. <laughs> you're um, such a terrible painter. Does that not it make does my not, painting any but, worse or better. Yes, but do not, in, it, do not give your bad habits to our entire audience, Justin. Because that's a terrible habit. Your poor brushes. Like, I feel for them. You're making me hurt in my heart right now. Oh, I even do it with Kalinske's. Oh, just don't even. Just don't even. Now you're I'm griefing kidding. me. I'm kidding. I don't do this, it's guys. I don't troll. do any of this. If you paid 15 bucks per brush, man, you would not do that. <laughs> no, you're you're absolutely correct. Oh, with gra via gravity, we use magnets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, to my clears. Yeah. I think the clear brights are as close as we're going to get. Uh, the Tamiya, Tamiya, Tamiya base, or Tamiya, I never know how to pronounce it, but um, the Tamiya base for those clears is a little bit weird. Uh, you're supposed to thin it with their solution and not water, which means it's not a straight up acrylic. 
Uh, and I don't like that. Um, I don't know that we would be able to do anything similar uh, or ex we wouldn't be able to do something exactly that. Um, not with the bases that we have right now, not with toxicity issues, because also the Tamiya stuff tends to not be non-toxic if you look at it. Um, so most likely our clear brights are going to be the best thing for painting clear miniatures. Uh, MC Bones, Core and Bones of the Pathfinder. Uh, Bones is an excellent starter set, Vanquisher. You, you uh, definitely picked a good one. Um, it's got a good range of paints. Corset's going to give you more off and muted and desaturated colors as well as specialty colors like the liners and the clear brights. So like when you get down to using, when you're looking for like more specialty um, line colors or primers and sealers, that's also in core. Pathfinder, the only difference between Pathfinder, they're formulated along the lines of the bones paints. The only difference is they're different colors. Uh, so Pathfinder is not a specific change in formulation or selling point. It's just uh, licensed by Paizo. So the color choices were set by Paizo. I just matched their swatches, baby. Although they did pick some really interesting colors, and I love that they are not afraid to put pink in their line. They have amazing pinks in the Pathfinder line. I am putting my purple lines on a back fin. Um, Norwegian Gadget Man, when I do brush clean, it's actually rare because I rinse my brushes compulsively and all the time. So I typically don't use like pink soap or anything. I don't find I need it. Um, when I actually have a problem where I've gotten paint up in the ferrule, I use Winsor & Newton um, Brush Cleaner and Restorer, which it takes the paint right out, but will also strip the paint right off your ferrules. Um, yeah, by the Tiger, I did the Pathfinder paints, but just to their to their swatches. So essentially, they gave us. Uh, oh yay! Thanks for the gift sub. Yes, thank hey, you for the gift sure. sub. Um, yeah. Okay, that's not my question. Uh, but yeah, I did the Pathfinder paints. I formulated them, but I formulated them to Paizo swatches. How many Reaper paints are available to buy? Well, let's see. Uh, also, it looks like my lots. sub notification's not working for some reason. I have to fix that. Like, technically, if we include the Pathfinder line, it's got to be over... It's almost over 500 now. It's got It's well over 400. Don't we have, like, big collections that cover all of those paints? If well, they, if if they wanted to buy as, one as of far each. as available to buy right now, right? Okay. So, like, because we've made plenty of colors that are not currently available to buy. Now, of all the ones available to buy, is it possible to buy all of them in one bundle? No. Is that, that I don't think we exist? have that yet. I think that would be insane, and we should do that for Christmas and see if we get any takers. We should. Do, do you... Because that would be, like, entire core line, all of it. So four caddies worth, wow. um, including all the Kickstarter, and, in addition, all the bones and all the Pathfinder. I don't even want to know... Maybe, yeah, maybe it's got to be more than 350 because we're on. Well, we did cancel, but we're, yeah, I guess we're only on three on the 320s. But no, if we already are on the 320s and we only canceled like 24 bottles, we should still be around 300 for core plus 56 Pathfinder and 54 bones. And then there's more bones if you count the dungeon dwellers. So we're definitely over 400. Yeah, I think. It, but if we gathered it all together, we could probably do some sort of, like, Christmas promo Delio. pricing, too. And you know what? I like the idea here just because I yeah, think it's so great. Huh? Maybe we would give away one of these sets. One. One one of these sets, mind you. Uh, Cyberstorm, you have a great question about brush trimming. I can show you how to do surgery. Wait, I don't have an X-Acto knife. Do you have an X-Acto knife, Justin? Um, that I could demo with? I deal with technology. I don't, oh, all right. I don't well, use... then I'll just show them with a Reaper Pokey tool. All right, so guys, let me find a brush with a hair or a brush that seems to have a hair. Oh, this one. All right. So if you want to trim your brush, say you have this naughty, naughty brush, which has a little hair flying off the bottom of it right now because this is my mixing brush. So I don't, I actually abuse it every day. Um, none of the rest of my brushes have flyaways. But if you see that you have a hair, take your X-Acto knife, a very sharp blade on it, hopefully, and kind of do just what I'm doing with the Reaper pokey, pokey tool here, kind of separate out that hair and pull it down toward the bottom. If you get more than one hair, um, try to re, you know, try to re-grab the hair that you are specifically looking for. Carry it all the way down toward the bottom of the ferrule and then slice. Essentially nail that hair right against the top, this lip on the ferrule and, and just cut it right there. 
the reason you, you trim hairs like this is you are not affecting the assembly of the brush and the way the hairs are set up in the ferrule. If you try to pull out the hair, you're going to disrupt and screw that up. Your brush is probably going to get damaged. So instead, go straight down with an X-Acto knife and snip it right off there. That way all the hairs stay in here and your brush should retain its shape. Oh, pokey tool. Hey, this is a Reaper, Reaper Pokey Tool, guys. We had this, we had these available at ReaperCon. We will probably have them available at ReaperCon in the future. They are for poking. If you have a paint clog, they are for poking down in the bottle. You insert it through the top. You poke all the way down. You pull up, and then you don't have a clog. And then you rinse out your Pokey Tool in the water. You know what? I was just thinking, Ann. Yeah. And I'll bounce this off of you right here. Okay? Yes. I was. I was. You know just... what we should do? We should have a free giveaway uh, for our Pokey Tools. You, we should. We absolutely. Although shipping them might be interesting. Um, just put them in cardboard. Okay. If you poke it into cardboard. All right. Um. So I was thinking, since yes. people seem to really like the idea of an all-inclusive uh, paint set here, like yeah. one of everything. Yeah. What if we gave away one of those? Oh. But listen, we have to set a goal here by which to make this happen. Oh yeah. Okay. We have to. We'd have to have a huge goal of we, people to get we, in this channel. Correct. We would have to have something. So maybe we should set it for next week then. Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Slow down there, Miss Ann. What? I was. I was. You're gonna do it hold now? up! Hold up! No! 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 I was gonna push this off a little bit. Oh. Okay. So okay. humor me here. Humor me here. What if we set a sub and follower combined goal that can also go towards. Um, the the uh, social media thing we're doing today, uh, so it kind of can work all together. Uh -huh. That let's say by December, if we have X number of total subs, okay, I'll get that number to you guys. Okay, uh, we will give away one uh, one massive of inclusive paint giveaway. paint set. And you know what? We'll even throw a poker a pokey tool in there too. Yeah, you should totally one throw a pokey, pokey tool. tool. Um, now if you guys like that idea. Obviously, feedback would be great. So, you know, Reaper Live at ReaperMini.com. Send me an email. Ed is totally going to steal this idea now that uh, you've come up with it. No, that. I've, you, you know what? This is proof. I've done it first. All right. Um, all right. Because I don't want him stealing our idea and our thunder. Like, we need this to be just Reaper Toolbox wait, Live. You know what, Numbat? That's that's the kind of minutia I'll work out. <laughs> all right. <laughs> they ask if higher it. level subs count for more. Maybe. I don't know, actually. Um, I think gifting subs at that point would be better. Cause yeah. Then, you know. Yeah. Gifting better. Uh, but I will I will work out the, the minutia, guys. But I'll probably give you guys some sort of crazy goal like by Christmas so that it can be some ginormous gift for everybody. What did you what did you find, Collins? You're clicking stuff? He's clicking heads. He, well, he likes no, to come and click stuff. Games. All right, so, yep. So I'm working on my next fin. Achilles blade, that would be the next thing, would be to like make it available like in some package. Um, but this is something we only just came up with, like this instant, and Reaper takes time to process. So yes, it's a great idea. Yes, we will bring it up to the powers that be. The powers that be uh, may or may not embrace it. Uh, however, you get to yell at the powers that be tomorrow, tomorrow night, um, well, Thursday sort of. night. Sort one of, of them, one of them's gone. Oh, one of them's but gone right I, now. I, I'm pretty Who's sure slacking? we can do it. Oh, we can do it. Who's Trust slacking? me. Uh, Ed is slacking all the way in Australia. Oh, I didn't know that he had gone down to uh, he's, Australia. He's wow, gone. you guys like like made him cry and he fled so, to where the kangaroos are. Like seriously. So before anyone starts going like sub crazy here and gift sub crazy, because I know they'll do it. They will absolutely. I'm not. We will absolutely do it. I just have to work out the the minutia. It will happen. I promise. We will give away one of every paint. That will happen. Yes. Um, it may have Somehow. to be delivered in a an eighteen wheeler, but it'll get there. <laughs> quick so. and make more colors. Yes. So, and there might be restrictions like uh, if you you live on the other side of the world, maybe we have to. It may take longer. We may have to work it out. I'm yeah. not sure. But we, need to we work will work out the logistics. We will work out the logistics of it. So. But this is an interesting idea. Yeah. But yes, and yes, like we will. It, we'll and we will it. absolutely talk about talk with the powers that be about. Um, Perhaps making it an actual product, one of everything. Yeah, the product I that. can't guarantee. I don't know if that's gonna. Yeah, happen, I don't but. know. Shipping that could be just crazy. I mean, you could definitely order it, but we could like totally, you know, we could try to do a package. We could even throw a bonus paint. <laughs> Uh, will that include legendary Drownable Pink? The last of the Drownable Pink was handed off to Justin and Collins in this very studio last week. Drownable Pink? Yep. 
Yeah, it's actually in a box right here underneath my desk. Yes, yeah, so he keeps at the it final secret supply. and safe. It's like the One Ring. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it's it probably about rates. what forty bottles here, fifty bottles worth. Uh, I'd say forty. Forty, okay. There wasn't that much left after a ReaperCon because I ran out of ribbons too. Although I did find one lonely ribbon then hiding in my purse, so I was not actually out of ribbons. I felt sad. Now I can tell you right now, if Internet heard us talking about creating a new product where it's one of every paint, they would kill us. <laughs> they they would they would, they would kill already us. be strangling like, us. Like right yeah, now. Cindy would be in here with the assassin. Like, oh, she tools. would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lo yep, drawn a drawn and pink at ReaperCon. That's that's the special thing. See, that's why we can't release it, guys. You know, like um. Technically, let's see, the sample purple, I think it was that, oh yeah, yeah, it was, um, we don't name samples typically, uh, Trasharama, but this one Sarah did write a name on, and I think it was Oops More Berries. Sarah likes to name her Oopses, and I thought Oops More Berries was kind of uh, a funny name, so. I think Sadie's, Sadie's first Oops was Experiment, number one, because it was a spearmint color. Yeah. So they've cool. been having fun with it. Normally they're horrified if they make a mistake, but. Uh, Hello, Miniatures Den. Hi, Miniatures Den. The stomping noise is the internet team approaching. Yeah, exactly. When the building begins to rumble. Oops, all crunch berries. That would be more like uh, orchid, because crunch berries are more orchid colored. There you go. You can use this color to name. Can I talk about the different tiers for my Patreon? Um, very briefly. Uh, Nurikog, I guess. I don't want to like take up much time talking about my Patreon, um, but I've got a. I, it starts at just two bucks because I want to make it cheap for like you know those who don't have much money, and that's like a short video or a PDF uh, on a on a technique or a mini um, once a month, and then the five dollar tier is actually me doing PDFs, so sometimes a short video about paint. Like uh, I'll take a section of bones colors and tell you what they're good for and what goes with them. Or I'll do something like I did last month where I go over the Reaper additives uh, in core and tell you how to use them. Uh, stuff like that. And then uh, everything up from there is, is just uh, uh, more. Uh, ten tier, ten dollar tier is, uh, is longer videos, uh, more complex subjects. Um, and then uh, fifteen dollar is the AMA tier. So people essentially get to uh, suggest what I teach uh, and uh, choose um, via poll um, what my topics will be to teach. Uh, and they also get to pose AMA questions uh, for me to answer every month. Hey, so if you guys needed more information on Anne's Patreon, we send links into them, so that'd be a great opportunity for you guys to follow. Oh yeah, there you go. There. You can just go read about it. Yay! I should have just I should have thought of that, but I'm painting a horse fin, and so I was like totally not thinking about that. Also, thank you for the raid. Thanks, Collins. Ray I didn't want to go off and just like talk about my Patreon when I'm on. Hey, we got Reaper we got a raid. Camp. We got a raid. Uh, fifty people from sweet. Gray Paladin Art. Yeah. Oh sweet! Hey, welcome raiders. So um, I'm not an Ixia, and I don't think I'm any other famous WoW raid creature, but, you know, I, I do paint a seahorse. At least I am this week. Um, so welcome. Welcome to our Reaper studio. Ha, ha, ha. So this is, for those who just joined us because of the raid, this is Reaper Toolbox Live, where me, Anne, um, paints uh, every week. Usually I'm doing Dance of Death, which is the Dueling Dragons Diorama by Julie Guthrie, but this week we are doing uh, A Seahorse Hippocampus by Kevin Williams, which is going to be part of the Bones 5 Kickstarter coming up. It's, uh, we are not, we are not it's close the... to where it might be coming in. I thought it was pretty close. The pretty close, but I don't think we're going to hit it. I don't think it's going to be revealed during this, uh, this cast or anything. Also, since it reminds me because um, I see him talking in, uh, in chat here. Dr. Bob, I got your email from like a week ago. We, I have a bunch of emails. I promise I read it. Um, we can absolutely make that work. That's what he tells all the ladies. We can. Uh, <laughs> yes. We, we, uh, I forwarded I your email. I got to, your email. I forwarded your email to Collins, and uh, he's, he's working it out right now. But uh, we, we should be able to uh, help you with that easily. Do, do, do. So I am currently outlining the fins to make them look more like these fins. Uh, these fins on our happy seahorse today are done using lantern yellow, which is a bones color. It is a very orangey yellow. Uh, the base coat is actually, to make the yellow cover well over the blue base coat that I put over the whole thing, I actually painted the area in white. 
And then I did a mix of lantern yellow and, here we go, there we go, mix of lantern yellow and white, which is about 50-50, it's a little heavier on the white, and then regular lantern yellow. So essentially, um, I do the regular, I do the lighter color here, I line it with the purple, I glaze with the original lantern yellow to get that dark yellow near the root of the fin, and then I highlight with white, and that is how I am doing my fins. We want the seahorse to look like a saltwater fish, so we're doing very bright patterns and colors on it. And uh, some of the colors I'm using are actually in the new Kickstarter that is not yet done, fun, done well, it is funded, but it's not yet done running. Um, this is going to be one of our orchid purple, and this is the rich indigo. So we are actually using uh, brand new prototype Kickstarter colors uh, for painting Mr. Seahorse. And I was earlier showing people how crazy it is that you can use this purple even to shade yellow. It's a purple that you can shade yellow with. Thanks, yeah, Edrigai, they'll all look like that eventually. We are slowly working our way through the finnage. There are a lot of fins on this horse. Yeah, oh, and our free giveaway today, for those who just came, uh, we do a free giveaway during Reaper Toolbox Live, and actually during Reaper Live also. So it's the translucent, let me see if I can get it, there he is, rawr, translucent wraith. Uh, in smoky plastic. That was last year's Ghoulie Bag goodie. Yes. And we're also giving away with him a special bottle of Spectral White, which is a purple white that we came out as a promo color for Halloween a couple of years ago and otherwise is not available. So you get a wraith and a bottle of Spectral White. There will be several uh, packages given away. So if you want in, type hashtag free in the chat with no spaces. Aha. There will be a problem. It will be a while until you finish painting them all. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Pun damage. Everybody roll a d4. There we go. So we're going to put in our actual lantern yellow down at the root of the fin here. I'll have to clean it up. I got some, got some yellow onto my blue. There we go. So I want that to be pretty bright down near the root. We're being punished. Yes, we are. Two damage. Okay, thanks, big cave troll. So everybody take two, two pun damage from that. Uh, yep, that's right. Bones five. <laughs> yeah. I got a four. Awesome. You could it maybe actually kill something with that magic missile for Parisian. Uh, honestly, for dry brushing, I think that the Taclon that Reaper and other brush companies sell is just fine. It's plastic bristle, but for dry brushing, it's fine. I mean, something like this, uh, if I have to dry brush like terrain or anything, I like this Reaper Pro Paint number four. It's a Taclon, it's a yellow Taclon. You can see the bristles are plastic. They will come apart and fray eventually into looking more like this Taclon that I abused more on my last uh, scenery project. But it's still a good dry brushing brush. Um, and I like flats for this because with dry brushing, you're usually trying to pick up texture on a surface. And so going across it with a flat, I find is more useful than going across it with a round. Dry brushing question answered. Did we get a sub? I missed it. Yes, we did. Yeah, like I said, I think the sub alert for some reason is broken on your. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On your show. I see Vanquisher is being generous today. Yes, oh Vanquisher has gifted forty-five total subs on the channel at this point. Glorious Badger, I like your name. Now I think our our overtime or overall lead, like in the channel total, number one goes to. Jacob Jansen right now, I think. Really? Um, but I think I believe second is Vanquisher at this point. How many did uh, Joseph do? do I, honestly, I stopped counting. What <laughs> Jansen, on it. He has given so many subs That's in this right, channel. That's right, because when we were when we were doing that last uh, drive, he was like, "Here's ten. Here's 15. Oh yeah, here's a casual forty, guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's his support has been he insane. He's super awesome. Uh, but you know. Everyone's support is also awesome. So thank you for uh, even the people that just Twitch sub or Twitch Prime sub for themselves. Helps the follows. Just follows. Hell, yeah, I was about to say follows even. Just follows are amazing too, guys. Anything, you, just watching us is great. Yeah, so. we like it when you tune in. It's super fun. We're here uh, pretty much almost uh, every Wednesday around uh, 1.30 Central Time USA, which is a little <laughs> weird for the Americans, but really apparently really good for Australians and Europeans. Um for which I am happy. Now, I do like what Vanquisher's doing here with the individual, like, uh, picking out of subs, like people who are always participating in chat but don't have a sub. And oh, that's nice. That's, that seems that's super great, awesome. You know? Sub-targeting. His sub-targeting system is exemplary. The, yeah, the, the duo team of him and, and Jansen is, is a, it's an elite team. 
have we proved they aren't the same person? Have we ever I, seen them in a room together? You know what? We've seen them in a chat I, room together. We've seen a chat we? room. Yeah, we have. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, give subs. Yay. Yes, and we love subs because when you sub us, guys, we get more ammo in our Hey Ed, Let Us Do This Even More gun. Um, we like that. Uh, more ammo all the time. Sorry, I've been playing a lot of Borderlands 3. But, uh, but yes, um, essentially when you sub us and follow us, it proves to the bosses that this is actually a cool, viable thing. And so it gives us a chance to like start more new shows or maybe to even do longer streams, things like that. Oh, yeah. It has enabled us to basically get a real budget for like a lot more equipment. And we're going to have a studio custom built here pretty quick. It's going to have like different sets. And you, you yeah. guys have absolutely shown that more time and effort and obviously money should go into this stuff department yeah and so the more subs we get um oh non-zero value i'm uh, playing Woo, yay vanquisher thank, thank you vanquisher he wants more content um, um non-zero value i'm currently playing uh oh gosh who's the irish guy why can i not remember his name uh but I'm, I'm playing him because my uh my significant other wanted to play the siren otherwise i would have totally gone with the siren zane yes I really like Zane. Oh. I think he's really funny. Oh yes, my uh, sub alert is working. It's uh, it's just my experimental GIF sub alert. So it's the ah. it's a it's a Bones Five uh, GIF. Yay subs! That's also a meme, by the way. It's, oh, we got it's... cheers too. Do we? Did I miss the cheers? Yes. Oh, and lots of subs. Holy crap! Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, holy crap is right. Um, Nomad Zeke, I kind of like to mix it up, and I also wanted to go outside of my comfort zone a little bit. I'm not normally a shooter player or anything, or I've, and I've never played a Borderlands game before, so I decided I would try something different for me. Um, and I really like Zane, so I'm actually happy that I went that way. I'm not as comfortable with close-up melee characters, uh, and the siren. Uh, some of the siren builds are... And it seems like the effective siren build, anyway, is, uh, is that for this game. And so... Uh, I'm actually really happy with my choice. I like to play something different, too. I don't like to say that, play the same. I'm the same in uh, role-playing games. If somebody else is playing something, then I don't want to play it. I want to play something different. So, uh, Seanald, it's, it's, uh, did you send him some memes? Because I will say that my inbox for Reaper Live um, is about 80% memes. Yeah, which is not a problem. That Keep is them totally coming. the proper balance um, of meme. It is. It's amazing to see the cons because they are absolutely hilarious. I wish yeah. I could show all of them, My but it would, are coming up. it would be a stream by itself. Yay. So. They can show some on the next uh, Kickstarter live. Uh... Huh? A meme toolbox episode. That would be pretty Shota awesome. Kami, yeah, Shotokami's looking for a daily toolbox episode. I'm not going to say that's impossible. To for a yeah, I mean, it's not impossible, Shotokami. Um, it really depends on uh, how much time like I could free up and other people who might do a toolbox could right. free up um, out of our it's normal personnel, duties. essentially, yeah. At the beginning of the year, you can expect at least another painting show by then. Yeah, oh, yes. I'd hey. be willing to say that by the beginning of the year, I'm going to have a lot more time to paint, so we Which might be able to daily? do a lot more toolbox, but Which we'll see. Um, he's doing every Monday. Oh, okay. I mean, like, no, I said daily, from Monday to Friday. Oh, if that would cost him. <laughs> I mean, basically, we, sure. we have to pay for hand time in one, per, one way or another, so. That's fair. <clears throat> I think maybe Rhonda got a little closer. Yeah, get a little closer. What's that, Collins? Rhonda. Did you say we have to move Rhonda to Reaper? Yeah. Rhonda, sorry, Reloc you're you're relocating, Rhonda. Reloc we will see you here, okay? Bird with a brush, guys. Yep. 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 To totally. To totally need a Rhonda. Then she and I can tag team this thing. Man, would that ever be awesome? There we go. There's our newest fin, guys. Look, our fins are all coming in a line now. <laughs> Anne is not retiring. <laughs> I am, however, trying to, like, teach other people to do my paint duties so that I might have more time for this, guys. So, you know. At least, like, day-to-day -day mixing, which can be done, you know, doesn't need to be done by me. It's cool when I have my hands in it, but... Yay. Yeah, Jerry, we could maybe... Like, if I was going to put a saddle on him, I'd probably shorten this spine. I probably would have converted him a bit. Because uh, I would want the rider to be up over the shoulders here, so I probably would have carved out, like, especially in bones, this would be super easy. Uh, maybe carved this spine down to be short and just kind of cut it here. 
Uh, that way you'd, you'd free up room here for a rider to go on the horse, which would be super awesome. So, Rhonda, you said your husband is going to relocate you guys because of his office option? All right, done. Thanks, thanks, Rhonda. I appreciate the commitment right uh, then and there. Yep. The DFW area would be a good spot to move or be close The enough. Justin and yeah, Collins DF, show. Make DFW. it happen. We get that every I, time they're here. Actually, DM Bayou Tiger, Collins and I have something in the works. We're not going to say what it is. But it, it could be the two of us, and it could be a show. And oh, not enough paint on my brush, guys, or but not since, enough water. Since we're probably this B and C television programming, we'll probably be on at like 1 a.m. on Tuesdays, you know, because that's the likely. They'll be doing infomercials on slicing and dicing. Um, see, I just missed a teaching moment, Justin, because you were talking. That's okay, oh, though. Oh, sorry. Um, so, yeah, so I tried. Essentially, I tried to... Uh, do a line of purple to line this uh, fin and my br the paint didn't come off my brush. So what that tells me everybody, because I'm using a very thin brush, when this happens to you, just put a little more water into your paint, which is what I just did while, while Justin was talking. Um, if your paint is having troubles and you're using a thin brush, it means your paint is too thick. Thin paint, thin brush. And then your paint should come off your brush in thin, beautiful lines, no problem. And it's still dark enough. Even though I put water in it, it's still dark enough to make my shading line. See? Just like so. There's my lines. Yeah, we, it would be good to have like a speed paint show, you know, an army paint show or a game show, game paint show, and then, you know, Anne's Takes Forever Corner. That would be my, my new show name, Anne Takes Forever. Although, to be fair, it does slow everybody down. Um, you know, I love to answer the questions for you guys. It does slow us down sometimes because I'm, like, you know, gesticulating or, uh, or uh, showing you guys stuff while I'm talking. <clears throat> but do keep the questions coming because I think they're a key part of this show. I do love sharing uh, knowledge with you guys and giving you, you know, a different way to look at stuff when I can. Every painter has something to teach you. We all do it differently. Nobody, there is no one true way. And the way you do it is just as valid as anybody else. Um, if it works for you. There is actually an episode, Sean, old, way back when, a blooper episode where the two of us host Campaigns the show. Campaigns forever and there's nothing on Ron's This was before Twitch. So if you go far enough back, you'll uh, see Yes, Reaper Paints do come with an agitator inside Holy Heathen. It is just a lighter weight one. It's not a, we don't do the stainless steel thing. Um, I've always been nervous about it because if you don't have a really high grade of stainless, you can get rust and it can ruin paint. Uh, so we do volcanic glass. You can hear the click slightly, but it is more subtle. Volcanic glass is totally non-reactive, which is why we went with that option. Uh, what is it, Sean Old? No, no, Seanald, we do actually have agitators in our bottles. They're just volcanic glass. So you can only hear a little click. You can't hear a big click when you shake it. But like, um, well, you can see it, because I just grabbed this from our production line uh, to fill it with water, and it's got the little glass bead in it, just like it would in any of our paint. So, ta-da. Nope. Uh -huh. The agitator used to be a skull. They are absolutely correct. Back when I started at Reaper, we sold so little paint that we would actually cast skulls and put a skull in, a pewter skull in, as the agitator into every bottle of paint. Um, oh, Chenault, we have always had an agitator in our bottle. Like, th this was uh, 16, almost 17 years ago, and we had skull agitators then. But then, after I created Master Series, it got to the point where we had one caster working all day every day to make enough skulls to put a skull in every bottle. So we had to stop because that was just like paying somebody thousands of dollars a year to just make something we were giving away for free. So at that point, we uh, looked outside. Uh-oh, too much, too much paint, too thick, see guys? Um, put a bit of water on that. Real quick as we near the end here, guys, get your hashtag free in. Oh yeah, get your hashtag pretty free quick. in. Here in a few seconds. So these lines are very narrow, so I have to be very careful. But Yes, so then when, we, uh, when it got too expensive to put a skull in every bottle, we switched to the volcanic glass bead because it was still heavy enough to agitate the paint, um, but it was totally non-reactive, so it wouldn't ruin your paint. That's important. So, Some grades of stainless steel are good enough that hypothetically they would not ever rust, or they wouldn't rust for, you know, probably 
years and years, decades, uh, so that would not ruin your paint. But I'm not a good enough, you know, industrial knowledge and to know uh, how to get those or what it, they might cost. So the beads are very inexpensive. It lets us get the paint to you without bumping up our cost. I'm not so sure, J. Ray. I ask myself that question every single day now. Uh oh, I, I missed that question because I'm actually they, painting tiny fin bits. They ask, what can we expect for the Bones 5 live today? Oh boy. Uh, chaos, insanity, craziness. Uh, Maybe a yes. new reveal if you guys pump a lot of money into the Kickstarter. We're 12 away, 11.3, right? Because it's 1750, is that the, or is it 1755? It's 1755, isn't it? Is the next reveal. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. 55 or 1750? 1755, I thought. Is it? I have one on my graphic here that says 50. Oh, great. Well, then we're not far. So anyway, who knows? Who knows? We never know what those crazy people are going to talk about. So there we go. We've got some fin lining in any way. Stuff and things. That's right. That's right, Amadeus. Stuff and things. Chaos Insanity Expansion. What size is the bead in the paint? Uh, this big. You can actually see the little bead. Hold on, let me roll it so that you can actually. Come on, bead. 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 There it is. Ta da! Tiny bead. <laughs> they may just show up and talk about beard oil or something. This is true. How many dragons do we have planned? There were a lot of dragons, Jerry. A lot of dragons. Um, I mean, we already have revealed like six, seven, eight. I mean, no, we've revealed. Five, right? Chinese dragon, dragon on the treasure, shadow dragon, swampy dragon, and then the spiky dragon, right? So we've got five already. There's at least one or two more, I thought, but I don't know everything. Like, who knows? Oh, we, Justin's telling me I have to wrap up, guys. Thanks for the follow, Billy, Billy, Bill, Billy Mare. Um, I missed your name up on the on the screen because I'm watching two screens plus a seahorse at once. Um, all right, guys, so get your hashtag free in if you want the chance to win a shadowy translucent wraith and a bottle of spectral white, which is a special limited edition color that we do not do very often. It's a purple white. It's really good for spooky things and glowing effects. Bashful dragon. Everybody wants bashful dragon. That would be a cute dragon. But anyway, so this is Seahorse, guys. That's how far we've got. So hopefully you like the fins, and I'll do some more painting on finishing his fins uh, all over the place. Um, and I got a lot of questions this time. Thanks for asking questions, guys. Aw, you're welcome, Neurocog. I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, total. Twisted Oma, this always goes so fast for me because I'm totally multitasking because I'm watching the chat, answering questions, talking about the paint, talking about the, the whatever I'm painting. Oh, uh, see, I asked for a gigantic fairy dragon. I saw somebody talk about fairy dragon. I asked for a life-size one. Did you say Titan? I heard Titan. You say Titan? No, we're not. We're not doing a Titan. We're not doing a Titan? Oh, no, oh he's griefing no, again. he's not. He wants a Titan so bad. All right. All right, everybody got their hashtag free in? Hashtag free. Yes, they do. I think I we have, do. He's about to hit the button. I've just drawn some. I'll go ahead and list all of these and announce all of them at the same time. All right, so our first winner is... Crowley Hamster. Yay, Crowley have, Hamster. I love uh, your name. Purple Girl 123 or 23? I love that I name say. too because purple is the best. Uh, Harrow Monkey. Monkeys uh, are cool. Chris RN4488. Shidohari. Yay, Shidohari. Soulpire. I like that. All right. Uh, Ten Hall. Truxer, which I love your picture, by the way. It's cute. And then Blade Mark. We have a wolf dragon, Jerry. Um, dragon Wolf, right? If you look earlier in the Kickstarter, I think we have Dragon Wolf. So there you guys go. Yes, it's slowly transforming into a painted seahorse. I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with scales and stuff. Lots of freehand on this one, guys. I was also hoping our uh, new emotes would be um, approved by now, but they're still pending for some reason. Oh, no. So, yeah, sorry, guys. You could always take Dragon Wolf's head and pop it on a different dragon. Like, we do have dragons that would fit it, I think. All right. Yay, it's me. Hi, guys. Bye, guys. Oh, we're at the end of another stream. <sighs> but I'll be here next week. And every week, actually, this month, I believe. There's nothing that should... Uh, oh, wait, uh, Thanksgiving week? Yeah. 
yeah, I should still be here. Oh, wait, that's next month. Never mind. I'm getting like totally mixed up these days. Um, yeah, so I'll be here every day, every Wednesday this month, uh, painting Seahorse until we get him all done. Uh, and I don't know if we were planning on doing, when is the Kickstarter party? Is that November the end of the month? 2nd. November 2nd. All right. Yes, uh, November okay, 2nd. Okay. They're going to cover that here in just a few minutes. Awesome. Yes, they yeah, I was going to say, I didn't know if we were going to do something special for the Kickstarter party yet, but we're going to do lots of special. Everybody have a great day. Go off and paint your, like, you know, little aquatic whatever you have. Um, I'm sure there will be more. More aquatics. I will, I will, I will do the, the Dr. Evil and slowly pet my seahorse. <laughs> Raise my eyebrows at the camera and say, ha, 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 ha. You just wait and see what's next for Bones 5. And on that note... <laughs> Shall we say goodbye? Yes, we will. I want to say real quickly, though. Yeah, just just do that as I make this announcement. Sure. Uh, remember to stick around, guys. Here in about 15 minutes, maybe a little less, 10 minutes, um, we will have the Reaper Bones Live uh, coverage go on. So yeah. don't, don't go anywhere. Just hang out. Talk to your friends for about 10 minutes. Yes. And uh, we will be back. 10 minutes. There will be more people to watch and more people to chat at. Yes. Have a good one, guys. Thank Come you back guys next week. very much.